This is Barry's first appointment. His boss has asked him to come for counselling, as there has been an incident at work where Barry lost his temper at a colleague. What the fuck do you think I meant? Barry's Just wife has recently done. left him, citing his alcohol use as an issue. Good morning, Barry. Would you like to come this way? And what has brought you into counselling? Oh, well, my, um, my boss basically said I had to, had to come. So. OK. So how come your boss has told you you had to come? What's been happening at work? Oh, look at me. It's a storm in a teacup, really. Mm. I mean, it was just a bullshit incident that happened at work. I've been under a lot of pressure and... Uh... OK. So what do you actually do, Barry? I'm an advertising executive. OK. And are you happy to talk just a little bit about the incident? Came back from lunch, went to a board meeting and this little... I was sitting around the table with one of the senior partners and this little asshole who's trying to make a big name for himself. He's basically saying the reason we're a bit slow on this campaign, big, big campaign, mm -hmm. is that I might have spent a little bit too long at lunch, little. Anyway, I, I just jumped up and I, next thing I knew, I, was, I just wanted to throttle a little prick. Anyway, the boss, so, boss hit the oh, roof. Okay. He's, he's been at me. I think, I think my fucking wife, I think, has been in his ear about. Uh, it, look, it's just a big mess. I've been under a lot of pressure. Work's tough. Uh, my wife and I separated a little while ago, so it's, it's just been oh, okay. pressure, you know. So would you describe it as one thing after the other? Is that yeah, what's been yeah, happening? well, yeah. Establishing rapport and showing sensitivity to the client's experience is an essential part of the MSC. Jenny acknowledges that Barry is dealing with one thing after another. The thing I've done, we've got a beautiful home, you know. <laughs> My wife has got everything that opens and shuts, you know, and... <laughs> and now, you know, just, just... If I can just go back a little bit to the incident and what has brought you into counselling before anything else, what did your boss do? Did he speak to you? Is that what happened? Well, he, look, look, alcohol... <laughs> We take people to lunch, you know? Yes, we schmooze yes. them, we wine them, we dine them, right? He knows that, he drinks it. So I have a few drinks with clients, so, you know? I have a few drinks at night. My okay. wife has been in his bloody ear about drinking. He's been complaining about me drinking at... Well, not drinking at work, but drinking too much. Okay. It's... It's, it's, it's pressure, you know? Barry is well dressed in a suit and tie. He appears angry and looks stressed. His face is flushed and he uses a lot of hand gestures that include rubbing his forehead and eyes. So do you think that that you have a problem with the alcohol? Is that No, I don't have a problem with the alcohol. I have a problem with a, a bloody wife who takes twenty five good years and throws it up against the wall because I have a few drinks at night. That's what I have a problem with. And a boss who Do you drink? Frequently? I, I have lunch, I have a drink with lunch, I have a couple of bottles of wine at night. It has gone up a bit in the last couple of years. Something happened a couple of years ago and it's been, it's been tough. And maybe... Does it make you feel better? Yeah. It would be good to have a little bit of an understanding of the fact that you can still be intoxicated in the morning after you've had a large drink. What, in the morning? Mm, absolutely. Unfortunately, um, it takes quite a while for alcohol to get out of the system. I never knew that. And it is, it, is alcohol the only thing that you take, Barry? Do you take any medications or anything at all? No, look, what, like drugs or something? Yeah. No, oh, I guess I'm, I'm a just bloody asking. Drug addict. You, well, I guess I'm just asking you about prescribed medications, over-the-counter medications. I, I can't. I, I'm, not, I'm not sleeping properly, and I um, okay. I get to sleep okay. And the, the, to be honest, the, the alcohol is good for that. But, okay. but I, I wake up and I, I'm in a panic. You know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, it's like a full-on panic attack, and I, I've been taking. Neurofin, okay. um, Neurofin Plus, okay. you know, prescri not, not, not prescription, you know, over the counter, just normal Neurofin Plus to get me back to sleep, you know, even mm. that's not working at the moment. Okay, has anybody ever told you anything about maybe there might be some adverse reactions to taking Neurofin as well as alcohol? 
Because it can be quite concerning. I you mean, just buy the stuff over the counter. What do you yes, mean? Sir. The counsellor has raised two risks connected to Barry's alcohol and medication use. He may still be intoxicated when he drives to work in the morning, and combining Nurofen Plus with alcohol may have health risks. So what's been happening over the last two years? Well, usual work pressures and things, but the, um, my, um, my brother died. Two, two years ago. We were, we were very handy, but we were very close. We were very close. And can I ask what happened to your brother? Yeah, he, um, he committed suicide. Okay. How has that been for you over the last two years? It, it, it was bad, okay? It's bad. It's done. It's over. Andy's gone. Do you think Andy was depressed? Oh. Yeah, I do. Um, look. In hindsight, I just... You could see it all. I mean, it just... But, uh, yes, yes, he was depressed. Just... You've talked a little bit about perhaps having panic attacks. Do you think that sometimes you're depressed? Well... Because, I, I mean, lots has happened in the last two years. Look, I work, you know, I, I function, I, you know, I look after the kids, you know. And, and I understand that, it's... Barry, but I'd just like to know how you're feeling at this moment. Well, I'm feeling betrayed, is how I'm feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm feeling as though she's deserted me when the... Okay. But how are you feeling on the inside at this point? I... I don't... I don't know. I just feel... as though I'm not coping. And I... I it scares me. I it scares you? Yeah, it scares me. You talked a little bit about the, the drinking or the alcohol making it a little bit better for a while. Look, to be, to be honest, right at the moment I'm just getting through, but if I had that support... Mood and affect describes how a client feels mood and how he or she presents to the worker affect. The counsellor explores how Barry is feeling. Low mood can indicate a potential risk to self. Barry says he's just getting through. The counsellor observes him to be tearful, stressed and upset. Barry, I need to ask you the question at this point. Have you ever considered killing yourself? Yeah, I've thought about it. But, but, but I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I, Andy had three kids and I've... I've Three beautiful kids, and I've, I've seen what happened, how they are. And I've got two kids, there's, there's no way I would do that. Okay. No way I would do that. Suicide risk assessment. Clients of AOD services are at a high risk of suicide. Discussing suicide with clients is vital and does not increase the risk of suicidal behaviour. Although Barry has been having some suicidal thoughts, he says he would not kill himself, as he would not do that to his children. No immediate suicidal risk was ascertained, but the counsellor will continue to monitor risk at subsequent appointments. We talked a little bit about the fact that you've been taking Nurofen Plus. We've talked a little bit about the alcohol being increased. We've talked a little bit about the fact that you haven't been sleeping well. Have you ever discussed these concerns with your GP? It might be worth talking to the doctor about your sleeping problems. Um, he might have a better, well, better I, way of looking at things. If I could get help with this, the sleeping problem, I think I'd be able to, pardon me, I'd be able to deal with the other stuff a lot better. Yeah. Okay. 
Barry, as I was saying, I'm very, very mindful of the fact that the alcohol has increased during that time. I'm mindful of how you're feeling at the moment that your wife has just left you. It's only been two years since Andy died. I'm just wondering um, at this point um, whether it, it would be good to have a few more appointments and to discuss some of the situations and what you're going through. Formulation and action. Once the MSC is complete, the counsellor is then able to make an assessment about the client's mental state and any possible risk to self or to others. Barry's brother was depressed and committed suicide two years ago. Barry's marriage has recently ended. He is not sleeping well and his alcohol use has increased. No immediate suicidal risk was ascertained. The counsellor will continue to see Barry for AOD counselling but will monitor suicidal risk at subsequent appointments and encourage Barry to see his GP about his poor sleep and low mood. The counsellor will also discuss her assessment with her team senior to ensure she has responded appropriately. I really would stress that you see your GP during the time between our appointment, just so that you can get a better understanding of the sleeping and what has been happening. How would that be for you? I think I'd like that, yeah. I'm also um, going to give you this pamphlet. If you're starting to feel stressed in any way, during the week you might like to take advantage of ringing Lifeline. Thank you. Thanks.